Alright guys, back again with another Texas Chancel Massacre review, and I have reviewed the first four Texas Chancel Massacre movies, and with Derek from Derek's Horror Corner, and then I am now reviewing Texas Chancel Massacre the beginning. We both decided to review this one before the remake, since it is a prequel. Um, and, I, and we didn't do it for the other ones, because those ones are all in all sorts of continuity, and this one makes total sense being a prequel to the remake, as opposed to like all the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies that don't have a same timeline. So, before I talk about the movie, let me go ahead and give Derek from Derek's Horror Corner uh, show you off his segment, because again, we have done every single review together, and he, we have done collabs, so check out his stuff as well, or his videos as well on this franchise, um, and his channel, and so I'm just going to let Derek go ahead, and after that, I will see you guys after Derek talks. Hey, this is Derek from Derek's Horror Corner, and I'll be doing another collab with Corey from CDR in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. This time, we'll be reviewing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the prequel to the remake. I feel that this is a very highly underrated Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, movie, and trigger warning, I think it's my favorite one in the franchise, more than the original, more than the remake, more than any of the other movies. This movie is spot on excellent. So when you look at the story, it takes everything the original or the remake did and did it better. You have this group of characters trying to dodge the Vietnam War. You got like the brother-brother relationship. You got like the two couples. I think the, the leading couple, the guy and the girl, the final girl and her boyfriend have good chemistry. So I think the acting is really awesome from them. Um, and they don't do anything stupid like pick up a hitchhiker. How they get caught by the family is they're in, a, in running from this woman who's trying to rob them and they hit a cow and that wrecks their car. And then the sheriff shows up and, and everything plays out like that. It captures everything the original movie was trying to capture in terms of like brutality and grit and hopelessness. Love the story. I kind of already mentioned this about the characters. I love all the characters in this movie. Love the portrayal of Leatherface. I think this is the best portrayal of Leatherface in any movie. He's quick. He's intimidating. He's brutal. He shows no mercy. Um, I love Arlie Ermey as the sheriff. I think he's even better than he was in the remake. Um, I love all the main characters, both the brothers. Uh, I love the final girl. Now, the one girl that's... Like the the other girl, I think like the blonde, she's kind of forgettable, but I wouldn't say that she's bad. A couple of the family members are a little bit weird or annoying, especially like that fat woman, but it's nothing that really kills me. All the characters are good to great in this movie. Uh, it has some of the best gore of any movie that I've ever seen. They have some brutal chainsaw kills in this movie. It's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I'm pretty sure this movie has more kills with the chainsaw than any other movie. And they don't hold back on the gore. You got high body count, you got gore, and anybody who knows my channel knows that I love, I'm a gore hound. I love the high body count, I love the gore. I could pop this movie in, I could rewatch it anytime. Uh, the one negative I could see people maybe having, and this is not a negative for me, is the ending's very dark and depressing, and you kind of know how it's going to end going in, because it's a prequel, so you know that nobody can get away or the family gets busted, so you pretty much know everybody's going to die from the start. But that isn't really a negative for me. Like, I just love the, uh, the dark negative ending. So, like I said, this is like a perfect movie for me. I can't really find any flaws, and I don't understand the hate that it gets, because to me, this is one of the best slasher movies that I've ever seen, and the best Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Again, Corey, thanks for letting me collab with you on this review. Come on over to my channel, Derek's Horror Corner, and check out my review for Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning is an interesting one, because... I've seen it before, only one time, and and this is the second time on rewatch, but for some reason, like, this is one I just kind of forgot about whenever I watched it for the first time. I thought it was kind of forgettable. And going back to rewatching this one, honestly, like, I didn't, I actually like this one a lot. Like, I thought that this one, in terms of suspense and brutality and gore, like, I actually thought this was a really solid, uh, 
sequel or, or prequel, you know. Um, but it's really solid in terms of the overall franchise, and it's not my favorite, but it is a really, it's one that's underrated, and that's what Derek thinks from on uh, as well. He thinks that it's a very underrated film in the franchise, and I agree on that. Um, I don't think it's the best, but I think it's a good one. I think it's one that needs needs to get more recognition, just because it is really good in suspense and brutality and gore. Um, so I really do enjoy this one. Now, I really enjoy the opening of Leatherface being born, because this is a really weird and disturbing moment, but I like it, where, like, his mother just, she's, she's, uh, working at this shop, or this factory, and, like, she's like, I need to go to the bathroom, and then the guy's like, you keep working, and then her water breaks, so then she just has him on the floor, and she faints, and it's weird, he like slides out and he's like a creepy looking baby. Like, he already looks disturbing. And I, and I thought that that was cool. Um, even though this is called The Beginning, it's it's like they showed The Beginning in the first like five minutes. So it's not technically the real beginning, I think. Even though I don't like Leatherface 2017, I feel like that one did more of a beginning story. Because this one is just another story before the remake. Like, it's not... It's not like you get to know much more about Leatherface. It's just another movie like the remake, and but it's good in a lot of aspects. But it's it feels like it's less of a movie about Leatherface's origins as opposed to say Leatherface 2017 that movie. Um, but it's not bad. It's just I won't, needed to point that out. Like it felt like it's again just another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that's not about. It's not really a real prequel, it feels like. I mean, it's before the remake, but it's just the same kind of thing again, like the remake, where a group of kids go, uh, Leatherface and, and his family find him, and then they get killed off one by one. So, I, I'm glad that they did do that with Leatherface, even though I don't really like that movie that much. But, but yeah, it was just interesting that this is a prequel, and it's not much about Leatherface, his origin. It's just, you see him for a... You see him being born, and then you see him working at the meat shop, and they're like, "We're shutting down." And then he kills the people who are shutting it down, and then he, then he, and his family run this town. And and it's quick and and effective, though. I do like that. I do like how effective it is that they do do that route. We're like, you. It it's cool explaining that the whole town is like there's nobody there because of this family. I do like how they connected that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and whenever Leatherface is born at the beginning, like, he is literally thrown into the garbage, um, and then this woman finds him, which is, uh, the crazy woman who adopts him, and that becomes the crazy family, and he fits along with this family very, very well, but he literally was just found in the trash by her, which is really, really sad, just... I feel bad for Leatherface in a lot of instances in this movie because he is just every word he is called, um, even to even by his family is like he's just called a retard or he's called ugly. Like it's it it does make me feel bad for him, um, in a way. So I do like that. Now I want to say also in terms of all the cinematography in any of the films, this one is definitely one of the best because. This feels very tried and true to the original film in terms of being gritty and grainy. Even though it's obviously more of a budget, like, it it feels like that original movie in a way with the grit. Like, it's very gritty in terms of the cinematography. I do like how it looks. Even though you know it's a movie from 2006, it still has that 70s type of grit to it. And I do like how they they attempted to make it that work that well, and they did. I think they did a great job at it. So I really like that. This The cinematography is really, really beautiful in this, and very well executed. Um, now, you you get your main character in this, Chrissy, played by Jordana Brewster, um, who's, all, who's in, like in the faculty and like in the Fast and the Furious movies. Um, she's the main star in this, and... It's funny because I can't help but point out that Michael Bay is involved with this one and the remake, and he picks like, like it's just it's just funny how these these actresses are good. I do like Jessica Biel and Jordana Brewster a lot, 
But it's just funny that I feel like they were put in here just because of their looks, and Michael Bay is just one of those people that that is like that. Like, the Transformers movies, like, you had all these supermodels that, like, it's it's just a thing that, like, like, yeah, they're really beautiful, but it's funny that whenever you see Michael Bay involved, like, you're like, oh, that was his immediate, like, thing he wanted to take care of first, is let's find the girl who's the cutest looking overall. And you can just tell, like, with Jessica Biel, obviously, and as well from the remake, so it's just a funny thing to notice that. But it's not like these, it's not like these woman characters are, are like, are bad or anything. It's like they're really great characters. I do like both of them, like, in both of these movies. And Jordana Brewster as Chrissy is really good as well. I really like her. And, like, she's a, like, she's really charismatic, honestly, in this. Like, she's good in other movies, too, but I like her in this one a lot because she really, for, like, I don't know. Like, it felt like a, they gave her a little more to shine in this movie, um, even though she was good in, like, The Faculty. But, like, I haven't seen her in a lot of movies where she really has a lot to do because, again, in Fast and the Furious, she's, she's like, the girlfriend. She's a side character. And in The Faculty, she's more important, but she's not, like, the main, main person because, like, there's a twist with her in that movie. So I liked seeing her a lot more in this movie. I thought that was cool. Um, and, again, I want to mention I like how the town is deserted because of Leatherface and because of his family and this them being there makes the town go away. Like, everybody goes away in the town or they're killed, and it drives off resources, and everybody leaves, so it's secluded. Um, I really like that a lot, and I like how... I'll get to Arlie Ermey more, but I love how he, in, in particular, like, runs this town. And there's some really very great scenes of suspense with the group of characters in a car... Like, the scenes in the car are really, really suspenseful and effective. Like, the first scene where, like, these bikers are chasing after them, and it really is creepy and scary, and these bikers aren't even involved with the family. They're just there, and they're they're just assholes, and I, and I like that. I like how creepy they were. So, and then you realize that they're not the big, they're not the big uh, problem here, because... Whenever you see Arlie Ermey come up, who has killed the last officer in town, becomes the main police officer because he wanted to, uh, he just tortures this group of people, and it is terrifying. Um, and these characters, I like these characters a lot, too. Like, they're, they're entertaining. Like, they're... Overall, like, in terms of, like, all the characters in, in the franchise, like, I think these are likable characters. I think they're fun. Um... I don't know how to rank the the groups of characters in each movie because I really like if I had to pick one so far I really like Stretch and I really like all the characters from two m the most so far out of the five that I've rewatched but this group of characters is really cool and solid and I do enjoy them and I like how this is said in 1969 so it involves them talking about the two brothers going to Nam or not or not wanting to and I like that it just brought that connection to it. Like, I just thought that was a cool little connection. And it makes sense whenever Arlie Ermey is torturing them and using army tactics. Um, like, I, I really like that a lot. Now, Arlie Ermey as Charlie is, is terrifying. Um, this character is... Oh my god, like, I... I really like Drayton Sawyer in the first two movies. Like, he's good. He's he's creepy in the first one, but he's funny in the second one. And in this movie, Arlie Ermey, um, as Charlie Hewitt, is terrifying. And I haven't rewatched the remake yet, because, again, like I said, we're reviewing this one first and then the remake. But, man, he is terrifying in this movie. Arlie Ermey is a fantastic actor, and he just died, like, I think a year ago? Like, or maybe less? And, and it was unfortunate, because he's been in such great roles, especially a lot of roles involving military or army, but I I really loved him in this movie. He's really fantastic and effective and really disturbing. Um, I really, really love that, and, the, and him torturing the two brothers is really effective because, again, he's just this insane person, and like the way that he pulls on these tactics on them is horrifying. Now, 
so so like everybody except for Chrissy gets taken to the house and Chrissy's on her own and I like how she finds this biker dude who has a girlfriend who they can't find and it's because uh Charlie Hewitt shot her like just killed her down killed her and shot her down like in a brutal way um so so the biker goes with Chrissy the biker guy and he's kind of a badass and like he I like how long he lasts and then whenever he gets killed it's like damn like it it's he I liked how far his perseverance and determination tried to get him in the movie like I liked how this character was I thought he was cool even though he's not in the movie for a lot um so I like that a lot even though of course he dies and obviously this is a spoiler video so everybody dies in the movie but I like that I liked how long he lasted now there's of course a dinner scene that's like a lot like the first movie and a lot of the sequels where like they're all at dinner and it's like uh Dean and Chrissy's stuck there and like they're tied up and like they're the only ones left and I like this scene a lot and I liked how creepy this family was this iteration of the family like they're really effective and I love this line from Chrissy because she says like because she's so pissed off like she's seen her friends get killed she is ready to fucking kill everybody like I love this character and I love this badass line it's such a great line where she says it's hilarious too because she she says to him at the dinner scene tied up not able to fight them she stands up and says do you guys fuck all your cousins or the ones you just find attractive <laughs> and everybody just like all the family just loses it because they don't know what to think because they it's kind of obvious and how they are like all messed up in that way and it, it's just it's a really cool line and I like how she fights back against these horrible people and I really felt bad whenever whenever most of these characters died but whenever Dean in particular died like he was just like like he gets chainsawed through the chest and like Chrissy's just there screaming and flip and flipping out whenever he gets killed in the in that factory and it is really great like it's such a fantastic kill and, and it's again really gory and effective the chainsaw kills in the movies where like Leatherface like runs them like runs the chainsaw through their chest and their to their to through their back I think is really effective um, they do that in two as well like I like that kill with Leatherface in two where like he gets the chainsaw through his chest um, those are like the gore moments that I really like in these movies now the final like 10 minutes of the movie are great because you've got the factory chase with Chrissy and Dean and then Dean gets killed and then we get like it really feels like Chrissy would have made it out alive like she would have made it out but again this is a prequel and usually for the most part prequels will have to kill off every character because they can't have this character under the authorities unless like they go crazy or something but like you, it, they didn't have it go this way and I did like how this had a really dire, dark ending where, like, Chrissy's driving away. And then they have a great Leatherface scare, which, again, most of these movies have a really great moment where Leatherface pops out. In this one, she's in the car, and he just pops out from behind her. And he chainsaws her through the chest, through the seat, up through her chest, and, like, kills her. And it is such a sad moment because I really did love her character. Like, I really liked her a lot. And damn, it was just a really, like, it's a moment where I hated it, but in a way where I loved it. Because it's like, you you got rid of the character I loved that gave me that much of an emotion to care. Like, I did like how these characters were interesting and fun. So whenever she was gone, it was just such a moment where I was mad. But, like, I like how this movie made me feel that way. And then, of course, he just walks away. And, like... I like how they have that narration from, like, how the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies have the intro narration, um, and it just is talking about how, like, what they say in, like, the first movie, like, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's the this group of, fam this group, uh, family group is killing off these people in this location in Texas, and I did like that, how they just said it without the, without the text crawl, it was just, like, Leatherface walking away. And it says the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then it ends. So it plays perfectly right into the remake. So that's a really great ending. And I and overall, like this one, just in terms of 
brutality and in terms of suspense, like this really is well done. And in terms of, I don't want to spoil how I rank these movies, but in terms of the five I've seen so far, this one might be number three overall because I love the first two. Um, and then, then like this one. So I think that's how I'd rank him so far. But again, I haven't rewatched, I haven't rewatched the remake or the Texas Chainsaw 3D or Leatherface 2017. So who knows? Maybe the ranking will be different. But um, overall, this one was a really fun ride, and I really enjoyed enjoyed it overall. I really enjoyed a lot of things about it. It was just a really fun, scary time. And it is one of the most effective in terms of cinematography and kills and gore and suspense. So I really did enjoy this one on rewatch. So thank you, Derek, for collabing with me again. Uh, see you on the next one. Tell me down below what you guys think of this movie. And thank you so much for watching.